All right, so let's go over the Vladimir Tarasenko trade ideas once again and revisit the entire angle over here with the St. Louis Blues. The reason we'll be doing this is because earlier on in the offseason, we had ourselves a whole bunch of rumors going about as to the trade request, Vladimir Tarasenko, a 35-plus goal, number one winger when he is healthy kind of guy, maybe in a position where he wants out, and there are teams like, for example, the Rangers, the Islanders, and the Devils that were all kind of going out there and contending for his services. We had the entire discussions evolving as the offseason commenced, and we had ourselves what was a really interesting discussion, asking where Vladimir Tarasenko would end up. This is mostly because we all kind of know that he is a talented hockey player, and despite the fact that he had been injured for a good chunk of the previous few years, he still does have some talent to his name. Now, his contract is $7.5 million. It goes on till 2023. And because that's not a small amount of money, the conversation as to where Tarasenko would be traded to was also a conversation of who could actually afford him, who could go and acquire his services and make it work under the cap, especially in this time frame where, I mean, we're talking about it now, it's September 9th, so the offseason is almost at its end, we have ourselves maybe like a month left. We're going over onto Spectre's Hockey here talking about Tarasenko today because what they did was they compiled the two updates we had from other sources discussing the number one St. Louis Blues winger and the entire status update with him. So I'll leave a link in the description to the Spectre's Hockey article if you want to go ahead and read that. This is what was said on Bali Sports Midwest by Andy Strickland. He hosted St. Louis Blues head coach Craig Berube on the Cam and Strick podcast a few days ago, and they asked Craig Berube about Tarasenko's trade request. Berube actually says that he doesn't expect Tarasenko to be traded. I expect Vladdy will play for us, and I'm going to treat him like any other player. He added that Tarasenko will continue to fill his role on the team, and they'll deal internally with his trade request. So, before we proceed any further, okay... Could we not actually see a Tarasenko trade even be made after we had all these discussions in the offseason, discussing the teams and potential fits and all that stuff? Is there a possibility that he doesn't even get moved? Well, Craig Berube says, yeah, I would not be surprised if he just stuck around. He is not going to be treated any differently than any of the other players, which is, you know, is good. Don't go out there and treat the guy as an outcast because you know he didn't want to play for your hockey team. And if Tarasenko is a professional, which he definitely is, whether he is in St. Louis or not, you know he's going to show up to camp. He's going to want to prove himself and be the best hockey player he can be, especially with the previous few seasons worth of material that we have had here from Tarasenko, mostly because his stats the previous few seasons, we can go over this briefly again. 14 points, 24 games played. Sure, it's a pretty alright points per game, it's just he's missed so much time that you really want to go out there and redeem yourself if you're Vladimir Tarasenko in this situation. This is another update here from Andy Strickland that was posted the next day after the Barubi interview. I still think that if Vladimir Tarasenko gets traded, a third team could get involved. There is at least one team willing to retain a portion of Tarasenko's salary. And so, that is where things get a lot more interesting, is when you consider the possibility of a three-team trade rather than just a conventional one for whatever trade from another team. This is what the Spectre's note says on Spectre's Hockey. It could take a third team to make a Tarasenko trade happen at this point. We saw these types of moves at last season's trade deadline with David Savard and Nick Foligno, where three clubs would share portions of a player's AAV. This was done with David Savard and the Red Wings, Nick Foligno. There was an entire thing done with the San Jose Sharks. The way this would work is Columbus would trade, well, Columbus would trade both of these players to a separate team like Detroit, for example. David Savard goes over to Detroit with 50% salary retained, and then Detroit would flip Savard to the Tampa Bay Lightning for another 50% salary retained. 50% to 50% is 25%, so Tampa would be getting David Savard at a full 75% cap hit retained, and they would only need to be having 25% of that cap hit on their own books themselves. So, that kind of move was executed by the Columbus Blue Jackets twice at the previous trade deadline, so we'll see if Tarasenko and his 7.5 AAV can do some sort of a similar move, where St. Louis maybe says, okay, we'll retain 50% of the Tarasenko contract, 7.5 divided by 2 is a remaining contract of $3.75 million AAV, and then that 3.75 AAV is going to be 
halved again so that whichever team is getting Tarasenko is only going to be getting him at a $1.875 million AAV. Now, that's unrealistic, especially since we have two more seasons of Tarasenko as opposed to one. This is not a trade deadline move for an expiring asset like Savard and Nick Foligno were. This is a guy who is going to expire in 2023. So it would be kind of nuts for a team to go out there and acquire Tarasenko for potentially two full seasons at 1.8 something million dollars a season, especially since he could be a guy who gets 30 plus goals. Who really knows? But if this is a move done maybe at the trade deadline next season, I could see it happening maybe with a little less salary retained, not the full 75% being held up by two teams. Maybe it's like, I don't know, 50% shared across both teams because at the end of the day, you know, the St. Louis Blues, they still do need to do their own hockey operations and holding on to however many dollars, 3.7 million for two years especially, would not necessarily be the smartest move on their own point of view. It would just need to be necessary to get rid of Tarasenko, who clearly has established that he wants out. Here's what Spectre says on the little thing here on the article, that Strickland did not mention which team is willing to pick up part of the 7.5 AAV till 2023. It could be a rebuilding team with plenty of cap space willing to do so if the Blues or the team receiving Tarasenko kicks in a draft pick. Potential candidates include the Anaheim Ducks, the Arizona Coyotes, and Detroit Red Wings. So let's go over these three teams right here and their cap situations as to whether or not they could actually fit in this kind of model where they hold on to maybe three point something million dollars, maybe a little bit less than that. You have yourselves the Anaheim Ducks, who, if you take a look at their cap friendly page, they have $13 million of projected cap space right now. And with the fact that they're not really supposed to be doing all too well, and that they only really have their own amounts of picks in the draft next season, it could be a pretty interesting move for them to go out there and acquire an extra pick or two to take on that Tarasenko contract. The Ducks are in a rebuilding state right now. They're being carried by their youth. You really want to see more out of Maxime Comtois and Troy Terry and all of them into the next few seasons. And plus, you have Jamie Drysdale coming over too, which you're really going to want to see doing well over there. Trevor Zagris is going to be leading the charge on this team later on. Going over onto the Detroit Red Wings, they have $15 million of cap space, projectedly speaking, and I mean, yeah, it's Detroit, right? Edvinson, Sider, Larkin, Sadina, Valeno, Kosa, all these guys are going to be the future of Detroit, and because they had been so good for such a long amount of time, Red Wings fans are a lot more easy on the waiting, I guess, when it comes to seeing the development of these guys and waiting for them to hit their primes. Guys like Verana and Larkin and Bertuzzi are closer to that than the other guys, but still, it's a young team. They have themselves the opportunity to go out there and get themselves more picks. They've done a good job at acquiring more picks in the previous few drafts, but if you take a look at the 2022 draft, hey, the Red Wings have an extra second, they have two extra fourths, and they're missing their sixth, and then the next two seasons are just regular one to seven from Detroit. So they could get some more draft picks, not really too sure if they would be complacent with what they have so far. And then you go ahead and look at the Arizona Coyotes. They have themselves $11.9 million of cap space, but they are taking on so many bad contracts right now. Louis Erickson, Jay Beagle, Antoine Roussel, you have Shane Gostaspare and Andrew Ladd as well. This team is absolutely loaded with contracts that they took on in order to get some more picks. Look at this team right here. Three first round picks in 2022, five seconds in 2022, then you have two thirds in 2023, two thirds in 2024, and three seconds in 2024 as well. This team has so many gosh darn extra draft picks, it's insane. They looked at what they lacked in the previous few seasons under John Chaka, and they have gone out there and sufficed in building up their draft capital in the next few years. So, maybe they're the team that goes out there and says, hey, we kind of want more. Let's go out there and get Tarasenko too, or at least a portion of his salary, and then we can get another second or whatever, because some team is going to be like, okay, good, thank you for doing that for us. Here's another draft pick. So if we see ourselves a Tarasenko three-team trade with one of Detroit, Anaheim, or Arizona, along with any of the other teams that we had seen that were interested in Tarasenko beforehand, like the Rangers, like the Islanders, like the Carolina Hurricanes, it could be a really interesting thing seeing Tarasenko make as low as $1.8 million, like 
dude, that's 25% of his total 7.5 AAV right now, and it is mathematically possible as to whether or not that could happen, it's just, it's up in the air as to whether or not it will. So talk to me in the comments, what do you think about the idea of a Tarasenko three-way trade? I hope you enjoyed this Vrishra Ashrol Sanaya 9. If you're the Blues, do you do it? Do you not? Do you want to get a third team involved? Let me know in the comments why, and bye.